We are in the tail end of Sefer Malachim, Parak Aleph. Uh, we're part five now. Uh, today, Sheer entitled Grasping Corners. And um, we'll see the end of the Parak just to cap it off. To review, we've had four parts already on the beginning of Sefer Malachim Aleph. I hope you realize it's not just that I was diving extremely deep, but because we're trying to give a little bit of an introduction to the book and the strange way that the book begins, the way in which there are varying political parties, literal and figurative, that are transpiring and that are jockeying for, for uh, status, I suppose. Uh, the reality of uh, the appeal to David HaMelech in terms of trying to understand the approach of Bat Sheva and of Natana Navi and how they're trying to, uh, if you will, right the ship in terms of the process that was promised that it was meant to be uh, a transfer of uh, leadership specifically over to Shlomo and that that wasn't happening and sort of put things uh, to set things aright. In the fourth part, we talked about uh, trying to talk about the notion of the fraternal king and uh, the idea of Shlomo as a fraternal king, but also David at the end of his life, we looked in Diver Hayamim at some of the speeches, the end of David and Melech's life, the way in which he spoke to the people, still it would seem at a time of strength uh, and um, and vigor. Uh, you don't hear mention that he's old or infirm, barring the story at the beginning, which may be a story that, you know, is, is enough of an indication he was out of the loop, etc. What we did not cover last year, which we'll finish up today, is the end of chapter one. I'm in the Korentana, page 401. Uh, no, 402, made a mistake. And uh, if you look up that section, you will find that there is a description in the um, this machine outside where I'm giving the shear. There's a description of what happens when the news reaches Adonio and his party. They are meeting and having a party uh, south of the Har Habayit uh, in an area known as Ain Rogel. Uh, if you look at Pasuk, Mem, it describes the people who are singing and dancing in this, uh, this hyperbolic statement that the whole earth was cracked open, it split open as a result of their sound, of this, uh, the, the sounds that they were making with all of the instruments and the, and the screaming and the shouting and the, the revelry. Pasuk Mem verse 41. So Kings, 1 Kings, chapter 1, verse 41. Yoav hears the sound of the shofar and is concerned. He's a military man. What is that sound that we hear in the distance? That word aval is like the aval of the brothers standing in front of Yosef, who they do not know is their brother. And they are falsely accused. And one brother turns to the other brothers and says, aval, ashemi manachnu, yet we are guilty. Woe betide us, we are, we're, um, we're, 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 we're guilty of these crimes. So aval, it's true that there's a lot of good reason to be celebrating aval, yet our master, the king, David, has crowned Shlomo. Nobody was quibbling that David was the king. The question was, had its time passed, and was the play passing to the next player, so to speak, to, to another king? Adonio thought it was him. And in fact, it's Shlomo. It's the description of, uh, of Yonatan ben Eviatar. Vayishlach ito ha-melech et sadok ha-kohen bet natana navi uvnayahu Ben Yehoyada, Vakreti, Vapleti, Vakibo, to all pure data Melech. They have put him up on the uh, on the mule of the king, and all these people is in the are in the entourage. Vayim shichu to tzadok kriim nata navi the Melech begichon. Vayim shem smechim vatehom akiria uakol asher shmatem. There's great celebration. That's the sound, the upheaval that you hear uh, of the crowd, the din of the crowd at the distance, and the sound of the music. That's because of joy. That's not an alarm sound. That's a sound of jubilation. Uh, we read this last time, just sort of setting the stage. Vigam ba'u avdei, vigam, sorry, yashav shlomo al kisem luchat. Shlomo's already sitting on the throne. Vigam ba'u avdei ha-melech l'varechet, atunei ha-melech David le'mor. And our, all the servants of your master, uh, uh, of the king, 
have blessed our master, the King David. Again, that emphasis of the Onatan ben, uh, uh, ben Eviatar telling Adoniyahu, listen, my friend, he's really the king. David is still the king. Lemor yetev Elohim. Who will raise up your his uh, chair, his throne more than yours? We saw the Gemara on this last time. Second Sanhedrin doesn't literally mean to supersede you in the negative sense, but rather the pride that you'll feel, the nachas, so to speak, uh, the me'ain. It's as if and the notion that the king bowed on his very bed. By the way, he's in bed, but from his bed, he's still running things. So said the king. Blessed are you, Hashem, the God of Israel, who has given today one to sit on my throne, and my eyes got to see it. Now this here, it could put the asterisk and go into Divra Hayam. That's what we did last time. We bought, paused here, and we looked at Divra Hayamim, the speeches of David, the speeches that are told to us later in history, and say for Divrei Hayamim, but the point is, wasn't mentioned originally, wasn't germane to the story, but it happened. As we know already from learning Tanakh a long time together, many of us uh, on this call, we're, we're a dozen years already learning more uh, together every week, right? So we understand not every detail is told to us. We want to know what was told to us, what's left out. We have here another perspective, a retrospective, if you will. Now, as believers, the children of believers, Ma'aminim B'nai Ma'aminim, so Divrei Hayamim, is written with uh, an editorial purpose, it's still written on Piruach HaKodesh. Those two are not contradictory statements, right? So if you're not coming from a religious angle, you say it was contrived, it's made up, it's a construct, it's a retrojection that never happened, etc. cetera. Uh, but within the framework of, uh, of Amuna, when one learns Tanakh, you say, if it made it into the canon, it's not a flight of fancy from some uh, legend that came and went. We believe that it's vested with a divine inspiration. We have an analog to this that was found in the Torah itself. We have four books that transpire largely three and a half of those books, actually into the fourth book, pardon me, into the fourth book, into Bamidbar, transpiring to certain chronological order, and particularly the story, that the stories, plural, from Yitziat Mitzrayim until the beginning of Bamidbar. It's about a year. And then in the middle of Bamidbar, that's our 38 years after the sin of the spies, 38 years or so go by, then it's year 40. The book of Dvarim, the fifth book, is Moshe Rabbeinu in year 40, giving us a retrospective on what transpired before. Now, he's uh, giving us details to stories we didn't know before. The story of the spies in Bamidbar is, God said you should do it. The story in Dvarim is, the people converged on Moshe and said, we want to do this. And Moshe said, it's a good idea. God, what do you think? Yeah, okay, right? And when we read, say, Bamidbar, Parsha Shlach, Shlach Lecha Anashim, you want it. That's a hint. But if you didn't know the story in, say, for Devarim, Lahavdol, like by the optometrist, you're just looking in without, as your two eyes are one in sight, as Robert Frost once said, and more of Robert Wilkinson used to quote it, as mine, two eyes are one in sight, right? You get perspective by having two, two, two angles of the same thing. If we didn't have Devarim, we'd look in Bamidbar and say, the mitzvah in the Torah. Shem said to Moshe, this is what you should do. Like the Ramban says, by the way, nothing nefarious, that people had to go on a trip to scout out what they were going to do. It wasn't going to be that God was going to empty the land. He told them he's not going to do that. They're going to have to do it in a very natural way. Good. So in Sefer Devarim, we find out, yeah, 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 there's another layer over here of the lack of uh, 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 certitude on the part of the people that they really could make it. And that was not just because the spies came back, give another report. They had that before, maybe. Or maybe they were the ones who initiated. Look, in the natural order of things, we understand that in Israel, we're not going to live as we live here in the Midbar. We got to get ready to go. Why well, am I giving you this whole excursus? I want you to realize that there is a very important reason why Malachim Aleph tells the story from one perspective. Divirim tells us from the other perspective. I guess the difference is Moshe Rabbeinu lived through, and many of the people in Sefer Dvarim had lived through the events 40 years earlier. So Moshe wasn't telling them details. It was a new generation, but there were still, there were kids who were still alive from then, right? And it's the same man. It's Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Emet Vitorato Emet. Here it is a difference of hundreds of years between the authorship of Sefer Divra Yamim and Sefer Malachim. Okay. Okay. But here you would put the asterisk on this pasuk and say, insert all the different speeches that David gave 
to the people uh, uh, collectively is in this spot. How do I know? Because after this, if you keep going in the story, which we'll see today, you don't hear David making any public pronouncements. It's over. So when did he say that? Probably right here. My eyes have seen it. Asterisk, turn to the very, I mean, we saw that already inside all different speeches and the whole retrospective, the story of how we got to this place and what the, what the Navi had told David, Natan Navi about, about Shlomo, his charge to Shlomo, we will have to go back to see, I skipped it. There's a direct charge that David gives to Shlomo, which is a, a beautiful charge. We'll see a little bit of it in, in Parak Bet, but the, 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 the more filled out edition, the more spiritual version in a certain way, I don't I'd say it that way, Naviim on a higher spiritual plane than Ketuvim, but in terms of the content and the richness of it, there seems to be more going on. Of course, when we get to Parak Bet shortly, there's going to be a cringeworthy element almost to reading that Parak when we see what's going on. But first, there's like five psukim left. Verse 49. So, Vayecher do. This is what's all what Yonatan ben Aviata reporting to Adoniyahu and his people. Everyone was very afraid. I don't want to be seen here, right? If I'm on camera that I was at the table, I'm a, I'm a rebel now. So everyone was scared. They got up. All people were invited and everyone went scattered. He ran and he grabbed hold of the corners of the altar. Which altar? What altar? Where altar? And the word came to Shlomo, behold, Adonijah is afraid of you, is afraid of you, King Shlomo, referring to him as Hamelach Shlomo. He's grabbed onto the corners of the altar, and he's telling everyone, I want an oath of amnesty from the new king, King Shlomo, right? That he shouldn't kill me by the sword. Shlomo says, if he'll be, you know, a, a good guy, a Ben Chayel means uh, he'll, he'll, he'll be a, a man of valor, basically. He's be honorable. Um, then not a hair will fall from his head to the ground. But if he misbehaves, uh, then he will get killed. He comes to Shlomo. No words are exchanged. He bows to him. And Shlomo then says to him, go home. Go home. That's the whole, that's the whole interaction. The two brothers, by the way, not full brothers, the half brothers, but that's, that's the extent of their of their interaction. Yeah. Look with me on the screen at some uh, some Makorot here in terms of uh, just filling out this section, grasping at the corners. So first of all, where is this Mizbech that he grabbed onto? Two views, Rashi and Radak. Rashi writes, Shaya begivon. Amar, he said to himself, Haruge beitin nikbarn bekivre beitin, amutkan bekaver bekivre avotai. The Medrash Tanchuma says he was in this place in Giv'on because he decided that um, I'll I'll be buried in my in my forefathers uh, a kever because I I don't want to be buried where the where the dead who are put to death by a court are buried so uh, I'd rather be buried in my in my family burial plot where is that in Giv'on where is Giv'on it's right over here. Now, just to orient you, Yerushalayim, this is still in the area of Yerushalayim. This is northern Yerushalayim here. This is Nebi Samuel, if you've ever been. I was just there, just there. Last January, I got to stand on the uh, on the roof at Nebi Samuel, and you can look out the whole area. Over here is the uh, E1 area, the famous E1, if you know what that is. Anyway, up here is Giv'on, we think, we think, uh, in this vicinity. There was a Mizbeach there. We're going to see that Mizbeach, a little bit about that Mizbeach further along, so bookmark it. But the point is, Ein Rogel is down at the bottom of this map. hope everyone can see it. Ein Rogel at the, at the bottom, the very bottom of the map over here in Rishalayim. Here's Har Moriah, Mount Moriah is here. Here's the Kotel Maravi is somewhere sandwiched in here. So this is the, Har, the Mount Moriah. Here's Rehov Karen Hayesod. I see it's written here. 
right? And Derek Aza, if you know where that is. Yeah, so this, this is Kikar Paris. This is the King's Hotel. It's right over here. Okay, so down here, Ain Rogel. So he ran all the way, made a beeline around, bypassed, and went all the way up to be in Giv'on. Why? As we will learn shortly, there was a massive Mizbeach there, and it was a religious center before Yerushalayim. Alternatively, the Radak disagrees. Ve'chazek bekarno de Mizbeach, Mizbeach she'ab Yerushalayim, ki heter habamot haya az, be'erzik b'mizbeach li natsal sham. It was the Mizbeach, this is in Yerushalayim, uh, because there was a heter of babot, so he grabbed onto the Mizbeach. Radak doesn't say it. Others say that it literally was the Mizbeach that David HaMelech had purchased in Goran Aravna. Others say that it was a Mizbeach, someone in Yerushalayim, the Mizbeach they used in Yerushalayim. He's right here. So he's very, very close by. And that's where he was, local to his, uh, to where his, where his, uh, the rest of the family was, where the palace was, etc. If you look up the book of Shmot with me, take your Tanakh, look back and say for Shmot chapter 21, you'll realize why he ran where he ran. He knew his Torah very well. It describes in chapter 21, in chapter 21, in Parsha Mishpatim, there's actually two things here. So I'm doing them out of order. I forgot to put the other reference, but the first reference is chapter 21, verse 14. It's page 87 of the Quran Tanakh. You don't have it there. You can look up in Shmot, chapter 21, verse 14. If a person will uh, uh, a plot and conspire to kill their friend, they do kill their friend in a stealthy manner, take them even off of my Mizbeach and they shall die. Uh, the idea that the Mizbeach will not be a place that they can run to hide or take refuge. Why would I think that? Why would I have any thought in that regard? Same page in the Quran Tanakh, page 87, or you can look it up in chapter 20 um, and, and look at uh, verse 22. Verse 22. Chapter 20, verse 22. So, or 21. Build for me a Mizbeach, Shem says, Mizbeach adama ta'asli v'zavach d'alavet olo techvet shlamecha v'tzon chavet b'karecha v'cholam ha'kom asher yizkiret shmiya v'olech v'ratiha Build a mizbeach, build it out of earth, tethered to the earth, built out of earth. By the by, that is what they basically build. It's constructed of wood covered in bronze, but it, it has to be filled inside with earth so that it's attached to the ground. It's a, it's very. Um, there's an organic component, the connection to the to the to the adama. Not for now, but mizbeach abanim tasseli. But if you build it out of stones, which by the by, in the early years they are building it out of stones. If you, when you build the altar, do not build it with cut stone. Why? Because then you will have used a, a sword on it to cut it. And that re reflects violence. And that is no place when it comes to the Mizbeach. From here, we have a halacha. The Rambam codifies it. It's based on the Gemara, obviously. But we learned that actually all things being equal, the Mizbeach does save a person from being taken away. A Mizbeach kolate, the Mizbeach can save someone. We're talking about this in the laws of Rotzeach, of a murderer, Shemir Nefesh, and guarding the soul. So a Mizbeach kolate, shari never bahoreg bezadon. So on purpose, if you kill on purpose, so miyem Mizbechi, tikachen lamu, take him away even from a Mizbeach. Michlas shahoreg bishgaga, eno nereg Mizbeach, that person, if they kill by accident, they go to the Mizbech, the Goel Hadam has no business taking them from there, right? They're on base. If they are they did it on purpose, so then the court can take them even away from there. It's like you killed them in a city of refuge. It tells you where this is. It has to be on the top the roof, the flat part of the, the roof, but the top of the Mizbeach that's in the Beit HaMikdash itself. Um, and, and who is it really going to save? Who are we talking about who can really go in there? Because a regular Jew, uh, Yisrael, cannot go really onto the Mizbeach. Has to be a Kohen, has to be doing the service at that time. 
Oh, Shehaya Oved, Vloya Al Gago, El Samach Lisbech, O Chesba Karnotav, Enoni Klat. But if it was someone who's not a Kohen, and, uh, or they are a Kohen, but they're not doing that vote at that time, or they're not actually on top of it, they're next to it, or even if they're grabbing onto the corners, that would not be good enough. It has to be Me'im Mizbechim is on top of it. Then comes our halacha. Someone who has done this, we give them guards, and with a guard, they're, they're transported to the uh, city of refuge. What's this case? A person who is obligated to be sent to exile. Aval. But a person who's afraid of the king, they should not be killed on account of national issues, or who's afraid of the court that they are going to kill him extra judicious, judicially, excuse me, extrajudicial temporary injunction. I mean, for that person, it'll be pretty permanent, but for everybody else, temporary injunction that they're not going to use due process, called martial law or something. So if they ran to the Mizbech and they're, they're next to it, not on, but next to it. Even if they were not a Kohen, they'll be saved. Yeah, so this was the line we came for. We learned that there's a halacha. Obviously, uh, Adoniel knew his uh, Rambam, so he understood that the Rambam says, um, being anachronistic, obviously, but there was an understanding, there's a tradition that one could run and find refuge in that spot and that they wouldn't, you can't touch them because they're, uh, they're there. They're in that place, and they are they're they're on base. They're on base. They're they they did something, and Shlomo knows this also. So he gives a certain reassurance. Now, what did uh, Adoniyahu say? Swear to me today. Today was the day of the inauguration. The minig of the kings is amnesty on the day that he is king. Ki hu yom chesed. It's a day of kindness. He's in a good mood. He just became the king. It sounds a bit familiar, maybe to a certain holiday that we celebrate annually in the day of the coronation, which is also the day of judgment, is also a day of great mercy, because that uh, was the day we kinged, we kinged the king. We gave him the crown. L'chein amarlo kayom. Swear to me today. Give me the, pro- the promise today. Why? Because uh, today's the day of your inauguration, your coronation. Bifrat ki hayom umlach v'nichna techef. So he, and he automatically, right away, Adonio said, I, I, once you were crowned sire, I'm completely subservient to you. I'm just taking out an insurance card. I'm hiding out, holding on to the corner of these much could do at Avdo Achashu Avdo lest he, the king, kill his servant with the sword. After all, he's his servant. And Sha'amelach Elo Rashut La Rokim Besaif. The king, when the king kills someone, they kill with a sword. Why? That's the process. That's the halachic process. When the king puts someone to death, it, that's of the Dalad Mitot Beit in the four ways that the court can kill someone if they have to execute someone, Lo um, When it comes to the king, that's with a sword. But he basically said, you know, don't kill me with the sword it means don't kill me for my rebellion. I, I'm really not rebelling against you, sire. I didn't know. I didn't know, etc. So what did Shlomo answer him? He didn't actually swear to him. He told him, listen, if you'll be a good guy, it'll be okay. If you cross me, it's over. He basically told him, I'm not going to hold you to account for the past. But if I find something is negative with you, then he says, I'm going to, and then I'm, and then I'm coming after you. Then I'm, I'm not going to take it lightly. I will assume that you really all along had it in for me. I'll take you right now. At your word, that you you weren't trying to uh, to undermine me. You simply you were drawn along by the excitement of the crowd. Yeah, whatever it is. Okay, I'm pausing here. Questions, comments. Rabbi. Oh, Helen. Good morning. Go ahead. Good morning. How come Avraham doesn't know this rule that you don't kill on the mizbeach? Avraham, Avraham Avinu. Yeah, he's taking his son on a mizbeach, and doesn't ah, he know okay. you're not? Wait, 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 wait
The, the Avram Avinu does not, the, the Akeda, that's a separate story. The Akeda is number one, a mitzvah from Hashem. Number two, no one, the Shechita does not ever take place on the Mizbech. The Shechita of an animal, let's say, always takes place down below. And then the parts are carried up onto the Mizbech, just so you realize. So it's not really, okay. not a fair comparison. Yeah, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Can I close? Can I close this year now? We're closing off after five parts was four and a half. This is like a half a half a shear. Tam okay. we're ending shear the shear uh, for for part one, chapter five. Finished.